you guys, my name's Heaven. I was gonna give you guys a walkthrough through the Becker study program for the CPA exam. So I take it if you guys clicked on this video, then you are going to be future CPAs. You guys are either studying now, you're thinking about studying, or maybe you're just curious about the different study options. I, however, cannot compare to other study programs because I have only used Becker. Um, so I'm not gonna diss any of the other ones and because I really don't know. Maybe the other ones are better, maybe this one is not. Um, if you guys are new to the whole CPA process, um, Becker is the most expensive study program. Most employment places will help you pay for it and finance it. I think they also have a payment plan where you can like pay monthly for it. So as of November 2017, that is where that is when I purchased Becker. Um, I got all four parts for about $3,800 I think it was going for. Um, when I had purchased it, it was actually running at a 50% off sale. I guess it was like a Christmas sale or something of the sort. Um, so it was split in half of that cost. And then the place where I work actually paid for half of it. So essentially, I only paid for one-fourth of the plan. So I hope you guys all have the luck that I have in your favor um, that you guys can get a discount on whatever program that you choose to use. Unfortunately, with Becker, it is on a timer. So you have 18 months from the day you first log in. So even though I bought mine November 2017, I didn't start studying until January 1st, January 2nd technically, New Year's holiday, um, 2018. So my timer started January 2nd, 2018. So I have 18 months from then before the Becker actually expires for me. But you get to keep the books forever. Um, you just have to rely on the fact that nothing has been updated on your exam if that time lapses for you. So... I started studying for audit first. I did not do the route that most people do was start with FAR. So I started with audit, got all my post-it notes here. One little post-it note. Um, I took my first audit exam at the end of February. So just two months of studying. And I got my results back at the beginning of March. So I was lucky and got my results back quick. Most of these study windows, you have to wait freaking forever to figure out if you passed or not. I had actually failed it. But in the meantime, of that two weeks while I was waiting for my results, I picked up FAR and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out these two first. And then I found out that I failed audit, so I went back to audit, retook it in April. I feel like this is not doing well for Becker because I'm like, yeah, I studied with Becker and then I failed. Guys, I'm a terrible test taker, 100% the worst test taker in the world, but I still really like the thoroughness is that a word? That Becker uses to go through all of the material. So I do not at all blame Becker for anything. I just suck at taking tests. And I assume that I'm going to have to retake a lot of these. That's just part of it for me personally. Hopefully you guys are better test takers than I am. Um, so I went back to audits. Took it April 4th. It is currently June 1st. And I don't have my results back yet. I do feel like I did pretty well. We will find out June 27th at the end of this month. So everyone cross your fingers for me that I passed audit. In the meantime, so about mid-April, I started studying for reg. So, I put far to the side. It was too difficult that first two weeks. I was like, I'm not ready for this uphill climb right now. I, I'm not going to give you guys any tidbits on what you should do, the, the order you guys should do it in. Everyone has their own opinion on that, and it depends on you personally. Um, far is... As you guys probably know, the hardest one that most people would say is the hardest. If you did really well in college and intermediate accounting and you just understood it really well, then I would say it wouldn't be that hard of a challenge for you. There are people that also say audit is the hardest because it's all conceptual. Um, there's a lot of gray area and a lot of auditor judgment that goes into that exam. I, even though I failed it the first time, I did pick up the audit stuff pretty easily. I just, again, suck at exams. I, I freak out and panic and I start sweating. I literally start crying in the middle of the exam. I, I have terrible at test anxiety. That is why I failed audit. So anyways, I'm currently studying reg. I am halfway done. There are eight units. I just finished unit five yesterday. So I will start unit six probably this afternoon. So let's get started. So with Becker, as with the other study programs, I'm sure you can get an app where you can work offline. You just download all the modules or the entire unit onto your computer. So you have the app, but I'm going to go ahead and do live. So I'm just going to use the internet to show you guys. So you log in. I think you get a few devices where you can log in. I do use my phone as well. So this is the home page that you will see as soon as you log in. It shows you the timeline up here. I need to rearrange that order because I think it's supposed to be the order you take them in. And I just, I did not take FAR first. So there was the two weeks that I studied for FAR before I found out a failed audit. <laughs> There's my audit. 
It is missing a little bit because they added a third mock exam. That's another thing. Becker gives you three mock exams now as of like two weeks ago. So obviously they only had two when I first took it. So it shows that I'm incomplete. Reg, I'm about halfway done. And then there is BEC, have not at all started. And I don't even have the BEC book, just these three. Of which my FAR book will probably not be up to date by the time I get to that exam. So it tells you what your next what your next move is. So again, I'm starting R6 soon, probably this afternoon. And it shows you where you are on track or off track. So over here on the left, we have our home screen. We have our the actual study sections that you go into study. This is the planner that I'm in right now. And then flashcards, which I have not used any, but that is another option that they have. The Becker Promise says you will get your money back if you fail. Um, you do have to go to the classes on Saturdays if that's how you guys plan to study. I'm doing self-study, so there is no way that I can get my full refund. That is okay. Um, redeemable books. I ordered one at a time, but I actually ended up with three. So, <laughs> obviously took audit. Then I ordered FAR because I was going to do it next. And then I studied reg. So, that FAR book is a whole other story as I was telling you guys. So, here I'm on the study plan, which is over here on the left. The third option here. So up here at the top, we are almost complete, but I'm actually going to go back all the way to the beginning. So this, I actually need to do this now anyway. So I took audit first, then reg, then I will plan to take BEC. I may get motivated and take FAR, but most likely not. <laughs> Save it for last. Then you hit next. Then I had my exam date. It was actually the fourth, not the third, but either way. So let's say I have not scheduled my reg exam but we will pretend like I did. Let's say it's July 10th. And then these two I don't know. Moving on. Here's our plan to study, 25 to 30 hours a week. It says two units a week. I've only been doing one unit a week. Um, so actually I, I can go ahead and change that. It does take me about 30 hours to do one unit a week just because I am super thorough with it. Um, I did start January 2nd. We have a summary page of the study, studying I plan to do. So then we have our plan, it automatically puts this up for you. This was audit. Of course, again, I failed it the first time, so this is kind of out of whack. So here's my regulation. And that random date I just chose, July 10th. Which actually, let's see, I'm in, I'm about to start R6 right here, first week of June. So this is actually right on point. If I can keep up with this, then I will be able to take it July 10th. And then it's got BEC and FAR. I do take a week off between exams, so that will be pushed back a little bit. So then you say complete, and I'm going to adjust it. So congrats! So if I was to print it, even though I don't have a printer, um, it does show you, actually this is, here we'll go here, can I zoom in at all, there we go. So we'll break it down by week about where you should be for all sections, the exact days. This says I will be, <laughs> I will be done by far by the end of the year if I make no mistakes and can pass everything the first time. That would be pretty sweet guys. So yeah, that is the entire study plan tab here. Now that I have now pretended like I scheduled my exam, it still tells me I'm not on track, but I am. It will tell you immediately how many days until your exam. I have not actually scheduled my exam, so that's kind of irrelevant for me. I will wait until I get closer to see if I need to study more, but it does give you a countdown. So when you guys go into your study sections, you go over here to the left, and here it shows you your whole performance so far. And I'm not sure why it shows I haven't done A2 on audit. It probably was updated since I took the exam, and therefore it shows that I did 0% on the updated version. I assume that's what happened there. Um, again, FAR, I have not barely touched at all. <laughs> Same with BEC. And then here I am with REG, so we'll show like I'm continuing the course. So here I have... It shows your whole timeline up here. I am 46% done with reg. That is because I forgot I have not done another simulation. 
So I will have to do that before I move on to R6 on my simulations. I did not score 100, by the way, guys. I go through and I <laughs> learn the ones I missed as I go along and then I correct them. I think I scored a 59, so don't let that 100 fool you. I definitely did not. So this one says it'll take me 90 to 180 minutes, which is forever. Hopefully it doesn't take that long, but I will do that this afternoon. Um, there are also progress tests in between each of the units where they jumble up all of the units together, all the multiple choice. So for example, let's say we're gonna learn about property taxation. Let's say that's my next thing to do. It'll show you up here at the timeline the different modules within the unit of R3. I'm 100% done with it, but if I had just started it, obviously I would be at zero. Also up here at the top, Becker is good about updating as it becomes updated. So right now, version 3.2 is the, is the software that we're using. That's what my exam will be on. If they do release a version 3.3, it will tell me up here and it will say specifically if you take your exam after June 15th, 2018, go ahead and switch the versions. It will tell you an exact date so you don't get confused. So Becker is great about that. Let's say we're gonna go ahead and start with M1. You have your lecture, you have skills practice, and then you have your MCQs. So the lecture is when you're watching him and he goes through the book. I will show you guys an example of that here in a minute. You also can take a pretest to see where you're at. I did not understand tax at all. I did not take any of the pretests because I knew I would score a zero. <laughs> but if you guys do feel like you can maybe skip some modules, then you can take the pretest and see where you're at, and you can skip it all together if you like. Skills practice gives you like a long problem. They're kind of like pre-simulations, um, and the instructor will walk you through it. Then the MCQs are all multiple choice, and they get, it just helps you with the module that you guys are working on. So I'm going to show you guys an example of what the lecture looks like. This one is only about a minute long, so I'll let you guys listen to the entire thing so you can fast forward if you don't want to. But you can see I have notes here, and this will be why I have the notes. And I'm sorry, this is as loud Let's as it is. Let's chat a little bit about capitalization or expense. The IRS has issued regs on whether and when a taxpayer must capitalize costs incurred in acquiring, maintaining, and improving property plan and equipment. If the regulations do not require capitalization, then the costs are considered to be repairs and are expense. So let's chat a little bit about tangible property must be capitalized. Okay, we already know that, we've already covered that. But let's take a look at this. Material and supplies, put down equals expense. Generally, the items that cost $200 or less or has an economic life of less than 12 months typically qualify as material and supplies and are expense. Amounts paid to acquire or produce property. That's easy, put down capitalize. Right? We already learned that one. The next item, improvements, put down, capitalize. All right, what's this single unit of property? What the heck is that all about? Well, it says a single unit of property, all right, is defined as all the components that are functionally interdependent, underscore functionally interdependent. The best example I can give you is a building where you have the HVIC, so you have the heating unit, the air conditioning unit, etc. A building structure is a single unit of property. Designated building systems considered underscore separately from the building construction include underscore that and colon could be heating, ventilation, air conditioning, plumbing, etc. So you can separate them. You've probably heard of component and composite depreciation. We're going to cover a little bit more of that later on in this session. The next item, intangible property. Capitalize it. You pay a premium to buy a patent, a trademark, a brand. So you guys can see he goes through line by line, tells you guys what to underline, what is what needs to be emphasized, the extra notes to make. And here, like he'll tell you to bracket off this whole section. I do make additional notes and I would recommend that you guys do as well on stuff that is more difficult for you. This entire module I was struggling with, so I made my own little note card to remember it by, but um, he never tells you to highlight. I highlight my own that I want to stick out. He did mention this homeowner's exclusion is going to be throughout the entire textbook. So I was like, yes, heaven, you need to know this. But there are lots of additional notes he will tell you. He'll tell you to draw all the way through this, which throws off my entire OCD-ness. <laughs> but whatever helps, I am willing to do it. Then you have a skills practice for each module. Um, this will give you a giant question to do. It's like a giant word problem or like a mini simulation, if you will. You can check your answers. So once you get to type in whatever you think the answer is, it'll turn green. 
or yellow if it's incorrect. It already starts out yellow. Actually, I do believe it's red here with the skills practice, but the other ones on the MCQs are yellow. It'll let you show you the answers if you have no idea what the heck to even do. You can click show and then you can reset all together. And he will explain it. So that's what I like about the skills practice, whereas the simulations, they do not explain it. You have to read and figure it out yourself about why you got it wrong. But here in the skills practice, he will stand up there and explain it to you. And then you have MCQs with every single module. These are just the multiple choice questions. There are about 70 or so on your actual exam. You will have a couple thousand with Becker by the time you take your exam. Maybe even more than that. There are tons of MCQs. And at the very end of each unit, like I said, you can do a progress test. So you can here, you can start a new test. It'll ask you how many questions that you want and from which unit. So if, let's say you guys understood R1, the first unit, you're like, that's super easy. So I just want to do R2, R3. You can choose that. It shows you your maximum because we're only in three units. So you have a maximum of 322 questions. And then how many minutes per question that you want it to give you time for. Then you say begin test and it'll test you on it. You can also with the progress test, let's see if I can remember how to get to it. Um, it will show you a map of your scores. Okay, whoa. Um, the, here's your mock exams, by the way. They do give you three now, as of like two weeks ago. I believe I took a progress test here. So, oh, here we go, reports. So I scored a 70. And then you can open up the report, you can review it, and then here's my chart. It shows me about, I think each, yeah, here, each section of what I scored on. So R1, I scored a 90. That's pretty solid. R2, a 50. Probably need to brush up on that. But probably need to brush up on R3 a little more than R2. <laughs> Obviously struggling, guys. And then I scored pretty well in R4, probably because that was the most recent one I had just studied before I took this progress test. And it shows you again over here. Oh, these are the these these go by each module about which questions were on there. There was only one question for M1, and I missed it all together for R1. So it does break it down for each module, each unit, I mean. So that is about as thorough as I can show you guys with Becker. If you guys have any questions at all, please comment below. You can also email me at heavensoddventure at gmail.com. I do check that about once a week, not every day. Um, you can comment and say, hey, I emailed you, and then I'll check it. Um, I do not get notifications for that email, but I do check it about once a week. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions about Becker or, again, I can't say anything about the other stu study programs, so don't ask me, like, is this better than Roger or is this better than Ninja because I have absolutely no idea. I also can't say if it's even working because I don't have my results back from that first <laughs> audit exam, the retake, because I did fail it the first time, but I do feel like I did pretty well, so I really hope that I passed. But I do really enjoy Becker. They are extremely thorough. Um, it does show you on here like how much study time for each unit. So like FAR, you can see here it tells you to study 150 hours. Um, it shows 10 units, 150 hours. BEC and Audit were both 90 hours. And then REG, the one that I'm doing now, shows you about 120 hours. I, however, I will read each chapter or each module and then I'll watch the lecture and then I reread that same module the next day. So I essentially read each textbook three times before I take the exam. So that is obviously going to be more than the 120 hours that it tells you. It is whatever works for you guys. And once you guys get in a routine or you get one exam behind you, you will figure out what works for you. Don't feel super intimidated or overwhelmed. It is overwhelming and it is intimidating, but you guys will get it. I promise. And if you guys have a community around you, that's what I love about this YouTube community. How all of you guys that are studying the CPA with me, it helps uplift me because as of right now, I, since I don't know if I passed that audit section, I feel like I have done nothing but run on a treadmill forever that's not getting any progress. Um, I have now been studying for five full months and don't even know if I've passed one yet. So it is a little discouraging, but if I did pass audit and if I can take reg in July, then I will have half of the exam over with, with half the year over with, assuming I pass reg the first time. We will see.
So thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you understand the Becker Study Program. That way other CPA candidates can see this video to go to the top of their YouTube search when they are looking for help with understanding the different study programs. Again, comment below if you have any questions or you want specific questions answered about the Becker Study Program. I will answer anything you guys want to know. You can email me, you can comment below, and subscribe to my channel if you guys wanna see the progress as I'm studying along with this CPA. Uh, I also work full-time in government accounting, so don't feel so bad if you're working full-time too. We got, we can handle this, guys. We can do it together, but we have to have a strong community uplifting each other. So thank you guys so much for watching again, and I will see you next time.